Hi, Angela Wolf here, owner of Angela Wolf Patterns and Online Sewing Academy. And we are remote again at my studio with all the travel restrictions. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a couture lace trim. So I embroidered all of this trim, attached it to the jacket before I sewed it together. So let me give you some ideas for this. So here's an example. This is one that I'm starting to work on. You can see it looks beautiful with this fabric. And what I have here is tulle and wash away, wash away mesh stabilizer. So this feels like fabric, it's not the sticky back. It just feels like fabric and this is tulle, which you can see here. This is a little bit different than when I showed how to do the inserts. The embroidery is the same, but the process is a little different. So the first thing you need to do is decide where this is going to go. So let's go back at this jacket and let me give you an example. So here, before I could start, I needed to measure how high my embroidery was going to go. So maybe this went all the way up to the collar. It doesn't matter. What you would need to measure, I'm going to need at least this much in length. And then I, if I'm gonna stop at the side or I'm gonna go all the way around, you need to measure that as well. The reason for that is, if you look closely here, you're gonna embroider everything onto one piece of tulle. Now you could always piece things together. So here's one similar to what I'd put on the jacket. You could piece these together, but as you can see, the embroidery that I chose can make a one continuous line. So ideally, if you have those measurements, then you can go back and just keep embroidering one big piece that can connect to the jacket. So I have corners for the bottom corner. How about take a look at the sleeve? That's another one that I did all in one, but you have to have the measurements for that. So let me just show you how to hoop using a magnetic frame. It's really simple and it's easy to maneuver your fabric around. So first of all, you need to cut your fabric wider, much wider than we would with just little inserts, okay? So as you can see here, I've got a lot more tool over here that I can use to be able to continue to go around the jacket if that's what I chose to do. So I'm gonna set this to the side for now. So with the stabilizer, you know, it only comes in certain widths, but if I know that I'm gonna have a piece that's really wide, I might go this way and then don't cut this off. Keep it going because then I can slowly piece this together and move the fabric. So you'll have your stabilizer on the bottom and here's some tulle. I keep a big piece because tulle is very inexpensive and instead of laying this out and trying to measure, I use the stabilizer more so as that because it's really hard to see on this tool fabric. All right, so if I were to start my design and I wanted to start here and go that way, that's the idea for this one. So you can see the tool, it's very wrinkly and you need to make sure it's nice and flat. So with this magnetic frame, you just pop this into place guide this way, make sure it's nice and flat. All right, then you have, go this way. See how that wrinkled? That's not so good. So pop that back off, and make sure that it's nice and tight. There we go. And now this end, this end here. So go back. Double check that everything's laying nice and flat, which it is. Got my whole batch of fabric over there. And now you're gonna go and put the little pieces on. This frame makes it so easy to design your own fabric because when I'm finished embroidering this section here, you simply remove the magnets and slide your fabric down or up or around or whatever you're doing. All right, so I'm missing one magnet. It's somewhere, oh, here, somewhere around here. Here it is. <laughs> there we go. So this is ready to go into the embroidery hoop. So if you're going to keep this much mesh on here, just make sure that everything is kind of tight together. I will usually just bundle this up and you just wanna make sure that it does not get under the hoop when you go to embroider because then you'll have a mess. So that's what I do for as far as getting started. 
All right, so I'm going to slide this out of the way and bring in a jacket that I'm working on. This one here is a couture jacket I'm working on. You can see I've already quilted the lining in here. And what you'll do with this lace insert, and I'll use this piece as an example, you're going to attach this to your jacket before you attach your facing, or in this case, I will just be folding the lining in to finish. But you're gonna attach this first. And you can do it by hand, but it's really easy to do it with free motion embroidery. So that's what we're gonna do here. So here's this piece. Uh, again, if you had your corners, you'd wanna start and measure, pin these in place. And let's go to the embroidery machine, the sewing machine, embroidery machine, because I'm gonna show you how to attach this to the fabric. All right, the first thing I wanna point out is take a look at my screen. These are pieces of embroidery that I have put together so I can do one large hooping. So these, this is the front of the jacket and the side of the jacket. These little pieces can be inserted into here or attached in different ways. So I just like to grab a hoop and embroider a ton of these pieces. And then when I trim these, make sure that you leave enough tool on each side so you can actually attach it to your fabric. All right, so if this is the front of the jacket, you would line the edge up to wherever you wanted it to go on your jacket. So if this, if you're going to be attaching facing, make sure you leave it out of the seam allowance area. Actually, this is the right side. You can see I used uh, just a lighter purple on the back. I thought that doesn't quite look right. Here we go. All right, so here's my tool right here. And here's my tool. So it might be a little hard for you to see. I'm using pink thread so you can see what's going on. I'm going to go back to a sewing into the sewing section. And up here, I'm gonna lower the feed dogs. Right now I just have it on a straight stitch, which is fine. And I would have this entire piece on my jacket, but I'm just gonna show you this in a little area here. First thing you would do is start at the closest edge to where your facing is gonna go or the front of your jacket. And you can literally just stitch this into place. If you're stitching on the tool, you won't be able to see it. Now I'm using pink thread so you can see what I'm doing. You see that? Now you could go as fast as you want, but for this, I'm just gonna stop for a second and just show you. Because I started that side, I can easily get in and out of these. Now, that isn't the neatest stitching ever, but you can see my pink thread. If you're using a color that blended in with your fabric, you would not see that. All right, so it's attached there. Now what do you do? So let's just say this is the front of our jacket, or your sleeve insert, and this is going towards the inside of your jacket. So now, I always like to work from this side of the design going in. It just seems to be a little bit easier. And let's go ahead and stitch around these flowers. Because I'm assuming your jacket, you're going to be, well, if you're gonna wash it, you would definitely need some. But if you're gonna dry clean it, you wanna make sure that these pieces don't come off. Now again, if you're using thread that matches, you don't have to be as particular about maybe you hit the embroidery a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching on the twill, or not on the twill, on the tool. <laughs> twill tape is what I'll be using in the facing, not for this. Okay, let's see what we have so far. So you can see my stitching going around here. Again, you would not see that at all if you had similar stitching. And then depending on how big your lace is, maybe you need to tack down little pieces in the middle. And if so, just go from one area to the other. Can you believe how easy this is? So that green jacket that I showed you at the beginning, I think it only took me maybe 15 minutes to do the trim on that entire jacket. But we're not quite finished yet. 
right, so this is what I have, but I still have all of this tool here. So let's go back up here, and you're gonna need a very sharp pair of scissors because this part is really tricky. I even need my glasses for this because you don't want to rip the tool. So similar to here, you can see this is the front edge, which is what we did here, and then attach that outside edge. Now we need to get rid of the tool. Just grab your scissors. And one thing I don't know if I mentioned, by the way, on the back of this fabric is fusible interfacing. You need fusible interfacing on the back of here because that is what supports the fabric to support your free motion embroidery on there. So I'm just gonna grab this. And watch how I can, you can rip this with your hand. So you have your scissors here. And watch how I'm just pulling. It just rips off. And if you get it going really fast, as long as you're using super sharp scissors, notice I'm just using the tip. These are gigantic scissors. <laughs> but I'm just using the tip because it's so sharp. I can get all the way inside. I got all of that out of there. And then you'll go down this side and do the same thing. This is actually my favorite part, ripping it away. All the tool is gone and all you see is lace. And that's how simple it is to embroider your own lace and embellish a jacket that makes it look very expensive. <laughs>